Welcome, everybody. Good to see everybody. Uh, good news today. I did not pick out the music. Jakia did, so I think you're going to enjoy the end of the show, so you can hang on to the end. Uh, Jakia. Good afternoon. Hi. Who do you want to be our first guest today? Uh, let's go with Miss Christine Humchowski. She is our House Representative, District Number 96, and it's good to see you. Thank you for joining us. How's Tallahassee? Hi, everybody. Well, I'm back home from Tallahassee. It was quite a session. And then we had, obviously, the special session um, dealing with the compact, the seminal compact. Um, it passed. And as you're aware, um, uh, the Seminole Casino of Coconut Creek is in District 96. And um, actually, all four cities, Margate, Coconut Creek, Coral Springs, and Parkland, receive uh, money from the compact. So hopefully that will start up again. Um, I wanted to just thank everybody for being here. Thank you for inviting me. Um, we recently did a Zoom town hall meeting. And um, uh, just to let everybody know about the different resources available to them in Broward County. And one of the groups that presented was the Area Agency um, on Aging in Broward County. And I'm going to put their link up in the chat. They have amazing resources for seniors in Broward County. So I really recommend uh, that you check them out. Um, also, feel free to contact our office if we can ever be of assistance, if there's a particular service you're looking for, even if it's not something our office does directly, we're more than happy to help. We've been helping people still continually with unemployment issues, um, as well as helping people expedite uh, passports. Um, a lot of people, uh, because of COVID, I think, didn't realize uh, their passports were expiring, um, driver's licenses are expiring, and um, so we've been um, thrilled to be able to help there in any way we can. And I will also put our office information in the chat uh, for anybody who doesn't have it yet. You can sign up for our e-newsletter, and we'd be happy to send that to you so you get updates on our town hall. And then um, we're very excited to be doing our... Um, roaming office hours and we're working now with Winmore to have our first uh, roaming district office hours sometime in September. So we're looking forward to that where we'll have our office staff there and um, you can come and just get to know the office more. We'll give you a brochure about different services available. And we're like I said, we're here to help in any way we can. So thank you so much and appreciate being able to be here. And I hope you're all having a wonderful summer, staying cool and dry if possible. <laughs> Christine, does the House get involved with the COVID protocol, or is that just the governor by himself? That's the governor. That's more of an executive decision. Um, I really recommend that everybody, if you have not been vaccinated, to uh, talk to your doctor about getting vaccinated. And then additionally, as we're seeing the rates going up, um, to take the precautions that we've talked about before. Um, if you're around a larger groups of people from outside the household, uh, masking up is not a bad idea. I have actually, when I go grocery shopping and stuff like that, I have actually continued to wear my mask. Um, I enjoyed not having the flu this past uh, winter, and I also enjoyed never getting um, a regular cold. So I didn't even do it when I went on, on, on the tea. So. Uh, that's, that's your personal choice, Bruce. Yeah. <laughs> it's a public service, so you don't have to see me. <laughs> Well, it can also be very convenient during meetings when you might not want everybody to see all your facial expressions. You've learned. <laughs> very good. Let's, let's give Christine some uh, questions. A lot of stuff's going up in uh, Tallahassee that uh, we need to know about as far as voting rights and uh, making things more difficult to vote. Do you want to talk about that, Christine? Yeah, so uh, an election bill passed uh, uh, it was unanimously opposed by actually every supervisor of elections in the state of Florida. So all 67 uh, supervisors of elections, um, a, ma a majority who are not necessarily Democrats, all um, vehemently opposed this elections bill. So that should tell you something since the supervisor of elections are those people that are in charge of making sure our um, elections are done in a safe um, and effective way. And unfortunately, they just made it more difficult with drop boxes, more difficult uh, with uh, vote by mail. 
So I would just encourage everybody uh, to double check with the supervisor of elections and I can put up the Broward SOE um, in, uh, in the chat, the email address. Just double check your voter registration, make sure your signature's on file. It probably won't affect uh, that much this election. All I would ask is that as election season is getting closer, if you are doing uh, vote by mail, make sure that request has been made and I would make sure to submit it as soon as possible. Uh, the election bill uh, did nothing to make voting more secure. All it did is make it more difficult to uh, securely cast your ballot. Um, changing time, saying uh, ballot boxes had to be uh, manned by personnel. And um, in the end, uh, when you do vote by mail, um, your ballot is still judged by the signature, so. Jakia has a question for you. Sure. Jakia? Yes, hi. Hi. I missed it, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Jakia, I think you wanted to ask something about uh, regarding online voting for visually oh, impaired in persons and the mock election coming up? You want yes. to ask so about that? The Broward SOE reached out yesterday in regards to a mock trial that they would like to have. Mock election. Mock election, I'm sorry. We call it a trial, it's really an election. <laughs> Party and um, but the goal was to get in touch with visually impaired persons for a new concept that they're considering digital online voting. It hasn't been passed. She just mentioned a mock election and if it would be possible for us to have people come down. Um, so I don't know if you had any details on that, if it's turning, if it's discussed, right now or this was just a one-off i'm not familiar with the program that they're working on um okay. i would i would suggest uh reaching out to them directly so we just are what we do is we vote on the the laws and then it's for the individual supervisors of elections to implement those laws and implement programs uh making it easier for uh registered voters to safely and securely cast their vote so th this sounds like more of an operation um i thought it was kind of cool but she said no you're not eligible if you don't have a vision okay, <laughs> okay. uh do we have any audience questions Let's take a look. No, I don't. Okay, you're muted. There you go. Let's take some audience questions and I'll come back with my question, Jackie. I don't have any hands raised. Okay, something in the chat, we'll check it in a second. But Christine, I think I read today about the, the state is concerned about people moving to Florida now that don't really understand Florida. So as far as voting goes, they want to like make it more difficult for newbies to the state to vote. Is, you know anything about that? Um, um, the newbies would be um, follow the same laws that everybody else would be uh, following. Um, I would just, if you know people who are moving to Florida, I would just make sure they get in touch with the Broward Supervisor of Elections um, as quickly as possibly to make sure that they are registered to vote in the state of Florida. It seemed like the attitude to the article was that they don't really understand our state, so they shouldn't really be participating in voting on uh, Florida elections. Wow. Did you see that? Did you? I, I might have seen it, but bless their hearts, if they are registered to vote, if they are United States citizens, if they're over the age of 18, uh, then they do have a right to vote. That's how it works. Okay, good. Well, I wish that you could be on more often, like, Every month? Yeah, I'd be we'll happy to come every month and give updates. Um, I'd be absolutely happy to do that. Just so you know, we have our committee weeks already starting the end of September. So if anybody has any concerns or some policy ideas, we're currently in the bill drafting um, process. Each state rep is given uh, six to seven uh, bills that they're allowed to carry every session. So I've been doing some homework. Uh, some residents have reached out regarding uh, different concerns they've had and issues they've had, and some of them um, there might be a legislative remedy for it. So um, if there's anything we can help with or ideas you might have, uh, please feel free to reach out. 
Well, thank you. I mean, and oh, and I would be remiss if I didn't mention we are doing a school supply drive. Um, the box is at uh, Coconut Creek City Hall, Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. And we're giving the school supplies to In Jacob's Shoes, and they will be um, handing them out to students in Broward schools. Okay, don't go anywhere. <laughs> Henry, read your email, Henry. Your text. Got it, Henry? You don't see it? Christine's about to leave, Henry. Getting ready? Christine, we'd like to thank you for coming on the air with us. Hi, uh, uh, Mr. Henry Turner. I see from the chat you were, uh, you were teaching at the BU School of Management many, many years ago when I was a student there. It was a great management program. Thanks. Henry, you should be proud. She turned out good. Sorry about it. Fingers <laughs> crossed. <laughs> Henry San Juan, what do you have to say, Henry San Juan? Uh, thank you, Christine. Good seeing you. Good, good seeing you, too. Did you ever get it back up to Boston? Twice a year. Nice, nice. Okay. Well, thank you again. Oh, and we'll I, be talking. Okay, so great. Thank quarterly. you so much. Thank you, thank you. All right. Oops, I muted myself. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, let's go with our lovely fire department. We do have Chief Gary and Fire Inspector Maloney on with us. Hopefully we can get some updates about the new firehouse and um, any details you can let us know. What's cooking? <laughs> Hopefully everybody's watching what they're cooking. We don't need any extra work. Good afternoon, everybody. I, first, I'd like to uh, echo uh, the representative's words. Wear a mask when you can. We're seeing a lot of, especially after the July 4th holiday, a lot of people who were vaccinated turning up positive. They're having minor symptoms. So if you're not vaccinated, please get vaccinated. Uh, it, it, it's your life. So uh, I'll leave it at that. We just got tremendous news approximately one hour ago. We were approved by the state of Florida as an ALS transport agency. So what that means is Coconut Creek Fire Rescue is now licensed by the state of Florida to provide EMS transport. So we're one step closer to our goal of becoming Coconut Creek Fire Rescue. The uh, fire station, yes, everybody on the It's a big moment for us. Uh, the fire, temporary fire station 113 is moving forward. We have most of the office furniture in there and um, a lot of the other equipment. We should, within two weeks, be completed there. Um, so that's moving closer. It's, uh, it's getting closer and closer October 1st. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Mindy. She has a couple words for you all. And I'm here for questions. I'll stay on for a little while. Don't go anywhere. We, we want you. Right. Uh, yeah, I won't. The mini owner looks like she froze. Yeah, she looks frozen. Okay. Well, Jeff just made a comment about wearing masks. And right now, the Winmore policy indoors, it's really voluntary. But it looks like we're going to get closer to make it mandatory. So, you know, keep your ears open. We'll send the blast out when the policy changes. But if you're gonna attend the first bingo, which comes up when, Jakia? Tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow, yeah. Uh, be careful, you know, when you're yelling at your numbers or throwing your chips around, you know, try to keep away from others. Now we will require social distancing at the bingo event, so just be prepared. Right. Uh, is Mindy back with us? Uh, not yet, but I do see a question from Miss Ann Goldman. Yeah, Hi, I wanted to ask Chief Gary about our fire hydrants in here. Um, some of them are in terrible condition, very rusty, very unsightly. And I was told that we cannot paint them or touch them. Are you going to come in here and renew their look? 
Thank you, Ann. You get bonus points for that one. That's good. Oh, thanks. Yeah. yeah. If you see Jeff out there tonight with his paint can, you know you got a good response. <laughs> yep. Um, actually, yes. Uh, we do contract a company to – because for our ISO rating, we have to inspect each fire hydrant at least twice a year. So we're getting ready. I'm not exactly sure where we are. Uh, I'll check with our fire marshal, but we're – getting close to that area. So as part of our annual maintenance, we do, um, we do repaint the hydrants. So, uh, and I do know that we did a couple in your community. Um, if you can send either Kia or Bruce a uh, email of the address, or if, if either of you know where that is, just send me the address. I'll make sure we get somebody by there. Jeff, you wanna hear a coincidence? You guys started today. Do you believe it? I just made a phone call while I'm you are quick. You are quick. <laughs> <laughs> you can go in the past. You're fantastic. Thank you, O'Neill. <laughs> yeah, right. Thank you, O'Neill. Right. That was a uh, secret source. Um, before we get to Mindy, uh, so you make sure they know to paint. They may not. They may just overlook that. Well, I like them refurbished so they look. Nice from the outside. Yeah. Jeff, can you make sure they make sure they're looking for that? Yep. Okay. Yep. You want to introduce Mindy? Wrong. I think Mindy's moving now, so I think we can get her on. <laughs> <laughs> not, uh, not, she's not. Mindy, wave if you see us. I, I've moved locations. Hopefully now I have a better. She's fading again. So Am I frozen uh, again? Yeah. Oh, you're coming back now, yeah. So what she, what she was going to bring up is, um, you know, uh, obviously we have to keep social distancing in mind, but we're starting our um, CPR and AED uh, training program again. So if anyone's interested, you know, if your building is interested in getting uh, CPR or AED trained, reach out to us and we'll start arranging that. Again, you know, we, we do have to keep social distancing in mind so we can do it in smaller groups. Mindy, you agree with that? I agree. Eight people is the max we can do. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. You're not, yes. Your lips are your lips are on moving, but we hear you. Oh, perfect! It's like those movies you watch when the audio is off and they're talking, and you have no. It just looks weird. Um, yes. Um, any AD or CPR training? Just let me know. We try to. Um, we can keep it under eight people, um, and we can set multiple dates up if we have multiple people. So. Um, just let me know when that works for you guys. Okay. Any, Jeff, you want to continue? Uh, Mindy? And, or do you want to take questions? Sure. Do we have any questions? Any Anybody have any uh, safety or requirements? We do. We have Mr. Eric Weiss. If you could please unmute, sir. Okay, hello. I want to move here full time, but I have to have services like a people watch and see if I'm okay physically and mentally, and have a uh, have a uh, enough groceries in my house and all that stuff, and Meals on Wheels so I can survive here. Because in New York, I have I have the subway and the bus to take me to doctors' appointments and everything, but there is no. Uh, good public transportation down here for doctor's appointment and also for seeing if I'm okay physically because I'm okay now. But I just want to be mentally alert that people can interact with me. It's called Solo and, Solo and Smart Club. Okay, and, and Bard County does have the program. Um, I think it's 211 or is it 211, right, Mindy? Yes. Yes. That you can enroll in that program and they'll call you at least once a day just to check on you, see what you're doing. If you need any other services, they are um, more than willing to help you out with any other services that you need. Because I'm just forecasting what I need in the future because solo and agers must get, get their act together before something happens. Yeah. You agree with me, Jeffrey? <laughs> yes. Because Absolutely. I, I, because I'm a solo ager, no, no visible, 
I'm not, I'm not a hooker. I don't have visible main. main <laughs> okay, the then. Thanks for sharing, Eric. <laughs> Paul, I like the joke. Hat for you. I like a... the joke. But, but I see a Riesling in those services just in case I can't drive no more. Thank you, Jeff. Yep. You're, 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 a, you're a good mensch. Thank you. Okay. The link for 211 is also in the chat box. Okay, if you want to take it down or click on it and bookmark it. If I can copy it, I'll be okay. Yes, you can. Thank you very much because, because and, and also, I'd like more people to visit me to see if I'm okay from the community so I can form my solo and smart club. Okay, thank you, Eric. Is that a good idea, Jeff? <laughs> it must have been a good idea. Everybody liked it. Diane's really Eric, when are you coming down, Eric? You, you can't come down? You're, you're muted now. Eric, there you go. Down in, in December. Okay, I'm good. May. Drop in on us. Say hello. But I thank you, Zoom, man. It's it's good. I don't even have to take take the plane down. It's all right. Yes, like being but, at Winmore and not having to travel, right? But I just don't want to go to the assi the assisted living places and, right. and the nursing homes. Well, we wish you the best of luck and health, and you know, stay healthy and hope for the best. Live long and prosper. Same to you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I, I, are, you, are you smiling at, at uh, my, uh, my suggestion for Solo and Smart Club so that, 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 that we can exchange services with each other? Okay? Thank okay. you. Thank, Thank you for sharing. Because, because I can do any, everything myself, but sometimes it, it, the tiring gets me down and I don't want to drive. So... If somebody would pick me up and go to Trader Joe's a, a, a couple, couple of times a month, good day. Good luck. Okay, thank you, Eric. Thank you. Good luck and prosper. Same to you. Jakia. Hi. We need some entertainment. We do. Mr. Marcel Rossa has been on our theater stage many a times, and he is our virtual concert on Saturday night. The encore is this upcoming week, so if you missed it, make sure you tune in at 8 p.m. on Channel 99. So we would like to thank you for joining us. If you could please, there you go. How are you today? Everything's well? We, oh, we can't. I can't hear you. We can't hear you, Marcel. Is your speaker on? Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, very good. Okay, great. Hey, yeah, I'm. I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, I'm uh, looking forward to uh, being able to perform for you guys live again. It's been a long time. Yeah, it has. It has. But your music's good. The community enjoys it. For those that haven't had the pleasure of meeting you, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. Well, I was born in Detroit, Michigan, to uh, a family of Romanian immigrants. My family, I always joke that my family is Romanian from Europe, from Yugoslavia, which now is considered Serbia. And I always joke that I'm Romanian from Detroit <laughs> and that I'm a Motown kid, Motor City boy, even drive a Chevy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Henry's on the ball now, good. Henry woke up. <laughs> we'll help you out here with the sound effects, Marcel. Oh, great. I like it. Maybe I can hire him for my shows, too. That'd it's be a little slow. You have to like give him the script like a week and a half ahead of time. <laughs> Excellent. Well, um, let's see. Last time I was there, I think, was a couple years ago. And I, I like to do a mix of all different kind of music from opera to jazz to standards to pop country even. I don't know if you guys saw me do some of my country songs. 
because I went up to University of Florida after uh, high school down here in Fort Lauderdale. And while I was up there, I noticed that um, I uh, really got into country music. I even got a cowboy hat and cowboy boots and <laughs> learned how to country line dance. And um, Can you give us a little Willie Nelson? <laughs> <laughs> Willie Nelson. For all the girls I loved before. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? I, might, I, I don't like to ask questions if I don't know the answer to them. But we would exercise... Are you a lawyer? No, no, I'm not a lawyer. You're right. A lawyer would say, you're pretty good. Uh, were you an exercise physiologist at Holy Cross Hospital? I was, actually. Uh, my, uh, one of my studies, I studied music since I was a kid. Um, but I, one of my other studies when I went to the University of Florida was exercise physiology. And I worked at Holy Cross for about 10 years as a physiologist. And while I was there... I was able to actually share my voice too with the patients in uh, at their at their bedside. I did little bedside serenades, and uh, the Sun Sentinel did a little uh, article about me called "The Heal." Oh yeah, well, you got the healing that. voice of an angel. Oh, <laughs> I have it right here. And if anybody Google's it, they should Google it. Uh, you're very modest. You should talk about this and uh, maybe give us a little time to say goodbye too when you're done. <laughs> <laughs> when you're done. <laughs> But uh, yeah, tell everybody what, what you would do. It's very, very charitable. Oh, it was, um, it was very rewarding to me because uh, if I just share with you one of my stories, you can imagine hundreds of these stories. Uh, I had a, I was r roaming around with my balloons and my flowers and my little boom box and up on the patient floors. And while I was up there, um, I went into one of these rooms, but before I entered, the doctors and the nurses said, hey, this patient that you're going to see now, um, she actually went through a really rough time. She, she lost her, her mom and her legs in a car accident, so be really gentle with her. So I walked in and I, I introduced myself and I said, hey, I like to do music to the patients while they're in their, in their bedside here. Would you like any uh, any kind of music? And she kind of looked at me like, no, I, I don't want any music. And you could definitely see she was very, very depressed in a bad way. And her father was there. Actually, her sister was there. And she said, why don't you come back the next day? So I came back the next day. And this time her father was there. And I walked in and I said, hey, I'm back. Would you like a song today? And she gave me the same look like, nah, I don't want any music. And the, the father said to me, well, you know what? We like country music. And you and she he looked to her and said, you told him yesterday he could come back. So let him sing you a song. So I, I asked, well, what kind of music do you like? And they said they like uh, country music. So I started singing this song. And by the end of the song, her face totally changed from being down in the dumps to, oh, my gosh, you should be on American Idol. <laughs> and that just goes to show you the, the the power of music and how it can bring you out of the worst situations. And uh, later on that day, I after I finished singing to somebody else, I saw her and her father walking around in the ha hallway, and they were in much better spirits. And um, the father, of course, was wheeling her in a wheelchair. But um, it, it's just those kind of stories that put goosebumps on, on my skin every time I think about them. And, uh, and I feel so, so, so rewarded by being able to share my voice. And I, I, feel, I feel like I was given this gift and I have to share it. Before I used to be kind of shy and thinking that was showing off. But then when I realized it was helping people and the doctors and the nurses in the hospital came to me and said, hey, Marcel, you got to share these these songs with our, our uh, patients more you're they're getting to go home faster because of you and I thought well gosh this is actually a, a good thing I better I better do some more of this so that, that that's what I did at the hospital thank you for letting me share that with you thank you that, I know that's very important I understand your father was also a folk singer yeah actually he sang on the radio back in in Yugoslavia and uh, my my mother's father played the accordion on the radio. And when they uh, decided to immigrate here because of, um, you know, tough times there, 
they decided to, uh, when they met in Detroit, Michigan, they got together and, and put together this, this wedding band and they were on high demand. They went and traveled from Chicago to Cleveland, to New York, to Toronto. And they did all these different places for weddings. And then my dad and my mom met because, you know, of course being in the band and a year later they got married. And the year after that, I was born. So okay. I was lucky because of my dad to get into the music. What, was she, what should we expect on Saturday night as far as what type of music are you going to do? Well, I have, uh, I'm even doing international music. I, I sing in different languages. And uh, not being a, a native Yiddish speaker, it took some time to get my tongue to work properly. <laughs> Yiddish is kind of difficult, one of the most difficult languages I learned how to sing in. But I, you'll have some Yiddish, some Hebrew, some Italian, some Spanish, I believe. Uh, I think I got a Romanian song on there, too. So um, I hope you guys enjoy the show. Well, I'm leading you here, but I, do you do any Bocelli? I think I have a Bocelli song on there, too, maybe. I, uh, time to say goodbye. Paese che non ho mai veduto e vissuto con te. Adesso si li vivrò con te, io con te. Henry, where's Henry? That was very good. And, uh, Jakia, how can people tune in? When should they tune in? And uh, so, how, much does it, how much does it cost? It is complimentary. Mm -hmm. And uh, it will be this Saturday, July 24th at 8 p.m. on Channel 99. Oh, okay. I was reading the comments. They asked if you were a fan of Michael Bublé. <laughs> you or him? <laughs> Marcel, do you do Michael Bublé? Michael Bubble? Oh, yeah. I, I love Bublé's music. And oh, so does Jaquia. And too, of course. They're, Bocelli was my first big influence. The, he really, really kind of gave me the ambition to go after it. And then when I heard Bublé's music and Groban's music, it just inspired me more. So, yeah, thank you. Those are, those are some of my favorites. So I guess we're not going to hear any Dan Hicks and his hot looks. <laughs> Um, not, not Saturday, huh? I do love Dean Martin, and though, and uh, I love uh, Frank Sinatra and and Mario Lanza. Th those are some of my other uh, inspirations as well. Cool. Getting back to the hospital for one second, was it your idea with the balloons and the roses? You just did that on your own. I I just thought you know instead of just seeing my ugly mug, maybe they'd like to get a balloon or some flowers or. You know, it's just to kind of pep things up a bit. What a nice guy. Yeah. Right. Thanks, thanks. Okay, you're taking, I see your, your oh. speech list, you <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. We look forward to Saturday's performance. All right, have fun. Yeah. Have fun. And again, and sing along and dance. Well, and do yeah, Marcel, right now it's just time to say goodbye. Time to say goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you Saturday night. We untied you. Okay, uh, Jakia, I think we have some police action up, don't we? We do. Our famous Coconut Creek Police Department. We do have Officer Michaela, who's joining us today. Good afternoon. How are you today? Thank you again. Is that a good thing if a police department is famous? Or is it infamous? Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Hi there, everybody. Good to see you all. I see some familiar faces. Um, I'm Officer McAuliffe. If you're not aware of me or have, we haven't met before, I'm filling in for Officer Zombach. He's currently out of town, so he's working with his explorers. Um, I pulled the stats from last week, from your last tea with him to this week, and um, there hasn't been a lot of incident reports generated, so that's good news. Um, the only one was a, um, an incident that could potentially turn into a fraud. But at this time, there's, um, there's no evidence of that. But basically what had happened was the reporting party re received an email 
saying that their Facebook account had been hacked. And they had the cognizance to look up an actual Facebook customer service phone number and had called that. And when they got the person online, they provided their personal information, which was like their name, their address, email address, and um, social security. That should be your first clue. When you make a Facebook account, you normally don't have to provide your social security for Facebook. And um, afterwards, I guess they had some um, you know, reservations about it, especially once they started receiving some unusual phone calls. So at this time, you know, they haven't been victimized of a crime. There's no evidence of their uh, bank accounts being um, compromised in any way. But when you get these types of calls, especially on your computer, most likely what had happened was that their computer system was most likely already compromised. So when they were Googling on the same computer to look up the Google number, the person that was conducting the fraudulent activity was providing them with a fraudulent number. And then when they got on, their people were asking all the questions. So um, that's just another indication with the fraud. And again, I apologize if my radio's on, I'm, I'm multitasking here. I'm actually working on a campus. So I have to have both the police radio and the campus radio on. So you might hear a little bit of noise in the background. I do apologize. Um, so fraud is on an uptick, as you've seen, even just on the news, all these um, companies, cyber crimes, hacking into corporations and stuff. Keep that stuff in mind. If you get something unusual in an email or like the text messages, go to a different device or perhaps have a family member or something use their device that maybe hasn't been compromised to get phone numbers and emails and stuff like that in order to contact um, your bank or Google or Facebook or Amazon, you know, we've seen an increase on um, fraudulent activity with people getting um, things from Amazon saying, oh, your Amazon account's been compromised. And so you have to be careful because the device that you're checking it on may have actually been what's compromised. So when you're allocating, you know, getting information off that same device, you might be getting fraudulent information. So if it's on your computer and you have a smartphone, go to your smartphone especially if it's a different email, because if they've hacked into your email and both emails are um, linked to both devices, you may still be speaking to the same people. So if your spouse has a different email, you might wanna go onto their device to look up the Google number or the Facebook number in order to get it. But if you're receiving emails like that saying that something's been hacked, I would go to a different source to get the numbers to contact that organization to verify whether indeed there's um, anything that's been compromised. Other than that, um, remember to lock your vehicles. We have seen an uptick in unlocked vehicles getting broken into, not necessarily in your um, community, but within the city and um, stolen vehicles. So again, lock your cars, secure your, um, your key fobs. Don't leave them in the cars. Some of the vehicles that have been getting stolen have had their keys left in the vehicle or the key fobs left in the vehicle. And the only other thing is we have a car show going on at the community center um, this Sunday from nine to one. If you like looking at some of those classic vehicles, um, they're gonna have a car show there right at the community center from nine to one and there's gonna be a hot dog truck. So come on out and come see us. Does anybody have any questions? Fred has his hand up. Yes, Fred. He's muted. Hey, no, I'm good now. Hey, how are you? I'm good, hey, how are you? Great, hey, thanks for all you guys do for the city and for Winmore, we greatly appreciate it. I thought the car show was Saturday because I was planning on attending. No, it is on Sunday. Sunday? I have to work it, so I know. <laughs> oh, okay, because, okay, I'll have to but double check. Do you check know it. Steve's gonna be back? Because Steve, you know, he collects cars. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, Steve and I talked about that the other day when we talked and I told him he was gonna miss it, but I'll let him know. But uh, it is Sunday because I think I think they had the 23rd on the uh, Coconut Creek website. I'll double check it. I'll double check the date, but yeah, it's the 25th from 9 to 1. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh -huh. No worries. Officer McAuliffe, are those, you know, this is the question you're going to get from all Winmore rights. Are those hot dogs kosher? <laughs> I actually don't know. I get that but at every event we go to. to. Ask him. <laughs> okay, it's important. If you want to sound like that, we, could, we get that question every event. In fact, John Contos, he's our new restaurant tour, which we're going to mention in a second. He did on July 4th, and uh, he, he made he mentioned that when he was on the air with us last week. He got Nathan's uh, instead of Hebrew National. Yeah, he thought Nathan's were kosher, <laughs> and they weren't. So. 
Okay, good. We, we thank you for coming on. You did a great Thanks job. Thanks for having and, me. I appreciate it. And hopefully we see you in person soon. It's been a while. All right. Thank you. Okay, we have a little bit extra time. So what we did last week in, in Goldman's on that we don't usually like to discuss uh, win more business here because we do that on Tuesday mornings. But I just want to have a few shout outs here. Uh, Lynn O'Donnell, are you on the screen? Lynn. She is here. Yeah, she, I see her. Put her screen back on. Lynn. Lynn. Next week, you should be. Where'd she go? Oh, there she is. Okay. Um, next week, you got a new uh, resident in your country club, right? I, we do. And that's Tuesday. And that's Tuesday the morning, seven o'clock. Cafe yeah. on the Green. Cafe on the Green. The restaurant. I'm so excited that the restaurant is opening. On Tuesday morning, 7 a.m., breakfast and lunch. And you have more and more people using the facility down there? We have the card rooms open. People are using the billiard room. Uh, there are people that need some faxes, um, and we've done that for them, uh, as well as copies. Hopefully, within the next few weeks, we should be opening up the business office so that if somebody needs to use the computer, we'll open up two out of the four computers. So they'll have access to that. People have access to the library and the other arts and crafts rooms, such as uh, ceramics, the art studio, stained glass, glass kiln. We're doing well. We're getting I need there. to do a fax. Do you do faxes down there? We do faxes. Okay. And you have a copy machine? And we have a copy machine. Right. So. And the billiards room is doing well. And billiards room is doing well. People should know about these clubs and you know get involved. They're and good. when they call, I try to give them. Uh, I try to give them also a list of all the the club presidents, so that if they need to contact any of the clubs, um, people are coming in the card rooms and posting for mahjong players, canasta players, etc. So, yes, we try to accommodate them. We're open from uh, um, eight thirty nine in the morning until ten o'clock at night. So they're Come on down to the clubhouse right. and definitely come for breakfast or lunch. It's the place to Tuesday. be. And for now, as uh, Jeff Gary said, you know, please wear a mask for everybody, for yourself and everybody else. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you, Lynn. Another kudos. Uh, let's see. Marcella Stock. Marcella, you can take your mask off now. I'd like to thank you for, for you know, what you said. O'Neill Elliott, uh, for all those that were interested, that if you wanted to go down to the security gates and see how they operate as far as gate access, uh, he would take you by reservation. And as far as I know, Marcelo, you're the only one that took him up on that. And uh, I really want to thank you for that as a resident that walks the walk instead of just talk. If you want to talk the talk, you got to walk the walk. And uh, you walk the walk. And I see you walk in the circle, too. How's the pavement? Yeah. <laughs> I do. I walk the circle and I walk the walk. And I think it's a, a great loss for the individuals that are not willing to take that tour with uh, O'Neill Elliott. It's very informative. And everything that you hear, unfortunately, is not 100% truth when you hear it on uh, social media or one-on-one. -on -one. The only way... You will find the truth. Your own truth is to go visit the security office and you will come out educated with the truth. That's all I can say. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for standing up and actually walking the walk. There's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. that was My great. honor. Thank you. And uh, I want to shout out here to Fred Michael. Fred, this, Fred put your phone down. <laughs> okay. Fred sent out two important emails to your residents today, which I uh, just want to recap, both having to do with the 40-year program. Fred, you want to uh, discuss those two emails? Yeah, we sent, uh, we, the uh, first one we sent out had to do with a, um, a special CAPS meeting that's on, on August 5th. Uh, for those of you who don't know, CAPS stands for Council of Association of Presidents. Originally, these meetings were set up just for the presidents of each of the associations. And over the years, as it has expanded where, you know, all directors are involved, council reps and residents as well. So this meeting uh, uh, is, is dealing with several issues, uh, dealing with uh, 
the 40 year inspections, the, uh, your building insurance, um, the, the Winmore attorney, Mark Bogan, and as well as the introduction of uh, the gentleman uh, from Delaware Elevators. That's our the new company that's servicing uh, all those buildings that have elevators. So we sent you the Zoom link uh, for you to keep if you want to participate in that meeting. That meeting will also be on Channel 99 uh, on August 5th. We will send out another wait, wait, note. Wait, wait, time out. Is that true, Henry? I know it's on Zoom. Is it on 99 at the same time, Henry? Yes, it's a caps. Okay, so so it will be on TV. Good. I wasn't sure. Yeah, I was. Uh, sorry, Bruce. I was already given that information from uh, from from Key and Henry. I'm so I'm happy about it. That's okay. <laughs> no, no, it's a good uh, thing. Uh, so, but we'll send out another you know a reminder as we get a little closer to that. The uh, second email that went out um, has to do with the. 40 year inspections of, of each building. It gives you when your building was built. It gives you when your uh, 40 year inspection was due. And it gives you whether your building passed, if it already had the inspection. Uh, if it's blank for those associations that are not due. And I've already got a couple emails from okay, people. Time out, time out, time out. Not if your building passed. All the buildings inspected so far have passed. That's what I said. All right. No, no, you said it tells you if it passed or not. No, they all passed. I don't want people getting upset. Did my building not pass? All yeah. buildings inspected so far have passed. The, there, there is a section in here that's highlighted. Uh, several buildings in Martinique and Victoria are highlighted in green. Those buildings are currently going through the process to be inspected. Mike Salabini would have more information on that. But your inspections are, uh, are in the process right now. And we're up to date and it's all going very well. And again, we emphasize with the people that live down in Surfside, but it's a different situation than here at Winmore. But Mark Bogan, our attorney, will be there and he's probably going to be talking about a lot of these law changes that we, we're going to be seeing soon. Because uh, just like with 9 11, our world became topsy turvy. Uh, expect the same thing with this because uh, it's going to get more stricter. It's going to be harder to get insurance. You're going to ask for particular things so it's a good thing you know we're on top of all this and uh yeah we don't have any worries we just have concerns and uh yeah the other person john bushhouse was the engineer that's going to be there and he's going to discuss the 40-year plan and uh i think we mentioned this last week that not only does he look just for the compliance of the 40-year plan just like a good doctor if he sees anything else while you're there for another reason He'll bring it to your attention so that you can correct that. And um, and Tim Renfro, who's our insurance agent, and all these things we're discussing about. A big concern is I'm a director of the building. Am I doing the right thing? You know, do I have any liability? People want to know that uh, you know you, you take this job as a volunteer and you don't want to put yourself at any unnecessary risk. Which uh, again, we would not put you through. So. You're being good shape. You're being good shape, but you need to hear that from him. So, uh, Jakia. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, anybody have anything you want to say? If not, we have a good song today because Jakia picked it up. <laughs> anybody want to help? Wait, if you guys hate it, blame him. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We're going back. We're ready. We're ready for Jakia. We're ready. Yes. All right. We're going back to May of 1967. A group that at that time was known as the Young Rascals, who got a little bit older, then they changed the name to the Rascals. And for spending four weeks at the number one spot on the charts is Jakia? Groovin. Groovin. Here are the Young Rascals. You know who he is, right? Jakia doesn't.
Well, thank you, everybody, and we'll see you. Diane's clapping. Henry, a little clapping here. Henry, Henry's like part of a clapping union. You're going to do three a show. Everybody have a great weekend, and we'll see you next Wednesday.